Hello everyone. Welcome to today's meetup session on how AI is revolutionizing retail exper experiences. This event is hosted by Data Couch and today we are honored to have our SME, Jisha Nenwani Sharma as an instructor for the session. Hello everyone. Jisha is a visionary leader in the field of AI-driven business transformation. She collaborates with businesses to ensure their growth through cutting-edge technology, supported by a talented team of AI and 3D experts. Her passion lies in making AI affordable and ensuring it delivers tangible value. She specializes in creating curated technology journeys, leveraging market-ready solutions and developing bespoke solutions uh, and developing bespoke innovations to fill gaps ensuring faster time to market, cost efficiency, and unique user experience. With two decades of experience in the product, in AI and product development, Jisha's career spans to roles at pre prestigious firms like TCS and McKinsey. She is a strong advocate of using technology as a growth driver, not just a cost center. Before we begin, let me take a moment to introduce Data Couch. We are leaders in professional service delivery, specializing in generative AI, data engineering, cloud, blockchain, cybersecurity, agile, DevOps, data science-based consulting, implementation, and training. Our offerings include consultancy, custom solution implementation, enable enablement services, and upskilling and training. In addition to our core offerings, we have a proprietary, proprietary browser-based virtual lab solution, and we also offer managed services for infrastructure and human capital to meet the unique requirements of organizations of all sizes and scale. We are excited to share that our global footprint has enabled us to transform the careers of over 150K professionals, thanks to this growing community of learners. Our expertise now spans across spans a cutting edge technologies like Web3, Generative AI, Big Data, DevOps, and Cloud, to name just a few, where we continue to push the boundaries of innovation. Highlighting our significant achievements, we have successfully partnered with Fortune 500 companies and glo global system integrators such as Infosys, TCS, and Accenture as well as tech giants like Apple and Google, and financial corporations like PayPal, Bank of America, among others. Driven by our com commitment to community and knowledge sharing, we have established three specialized meetup groups, AI Minds, Generative AI User Groups, and All Things Data. With a membership exceeding 25,000, our community has participated in over 200 such sessions covering more than 100 diverse technologies and tools. We are honored to announce that Confluent has recognized us as the only global education partner for the years 2022 and 2023. This recognition received for the second consecutive year underscores our leadership in providing cutting-edge training and consultancy services on a global scale. As the first delivery partner for Starbucks Data and OneHouse, we are proud to forge and build upon strong partnerships with industry leaders. While some client names remain confidential, our collaborations include a global beverages and sm snacks multinational, a premium North American payment solutions provider, a cutting edge cybersecurity and risk management platform, and a retail giant with operations across five continents. Now, I would like Jisha to take over the session. Thank you, Siddhant. Hi, everyone. I will share my screen. So as Siddhant said, today we will be talking about AI applications in retail in particular. And then not just talking, we will also go through some of the applications that we have uh, created for some of our clients. You already heard about me. 
who I am. I'm also joined by four amazing pillars that I have in this journey. Deva, Shiv, Arnav and Chinmay. They all will be showcasing some of the work uh, we've done more so from the perspective of how AI can be leveraged in similar retail applications. So without further ado, let's get started. So here on the screen, on the top left, you see Walmart's saving catcher. Then, of course, you see Alexa. And then there is a coupon cartwheel used by Target. There's Tira, there's H&M Kid Bar, and Hindustan Unilever Limited. How about you all put out there in chat, what is the common denominator in all of these? What do you think is common for all of these applications that you just saw? Do you guys want to put your thoughts on chat? All virtual, yes. Any other guesses? AI, yes. I think probably I, I, when I was changing the screen, I saw that it was written also here because it wasn't in the presentation mode, yes. All of these companies have been great at using artificial intelligence to deliver value. On the left one, Walmart used AI to present to the user, like if they were shopping an X item, that by y, buying a Y item, which is similar to that, like a carton of milk, how they can save by bundling it together. Alexa, we all know how it operates. We've, I think all of us have used it. It gave right coupons to right people in the right region when they were shopping in a personalized way. Tira is a beauty try-on app. H&M used chatbot to give more personalized experiences, increasing their conversion. And Hindus, any, any guesses on what Hindustan Unilever used AI for? Feel free to unmute and speak up. They've been um, big on using AI for inventory management. So what are, so we will stick to top three AI applications in detail for this conversation. So the first and foremost, chatbot and customer support. While in many of the applications, chatbots are mere automation and not using artificial intelligence, but most of these chatbots do have a path of using chat as a user experience and then using all the data to give more stronger features. But ultimately, chatbots and customer support have sweeped the world, at least in retail. It's almost like if you do not have a chatbot or a 24 cross 7 support, customers almost feel like that they're not important to you. So that's the first space where AI has made a lot of whirlwind. We will get a little bit deeper into that as well. We'll also actually show you one of the examples today. Then the second space is related to personalization and visualization. Retail has become all about hyper-personalization and AI plays a huge role. All those amazing product recommendations that we see while we are shopping and then, you know, how sales and customer satisfaction is being increased by uh, making the feeds more and more personalized. And also all these new generative AI and 3D-based visualizations and try-ons as well as virtual store experiences have given a new avenues to the brands to create the, their brand experience in the virtual space. Last but not the least, inventory and supply chain remain one of the most important areas in retail. And AI has hugely helped in improving the inventory ratio there. So let's get a little bit deeper into chatbots and not just the talk, right? If any of you is in the retail industry, I also have some of the names mentioned here, which you can try out, which are pretty popular for Indian market. The H&M one is not the Indian market, but Watchy, Gupshop, Interact are pretty popular. Even if your store is on Shopify, Watchy and Interact is available off the hook. It can be integrated with a week's worth of work and chat can be used as an experience, even integrated with WhatsApp to start selling and promoting your stuff. Gupshub comes with interesting AI enabled features as well as has uh, data driven journeys. 
But before that, how will chatbots help? There are clearly five areas. One is ch customer support. I think this is something that all of us would have used. And the best advantage of this is getting the round the clock assistance. Then product recommendations is another area. We have one of our own, which we'll show you shortly. Then order processing and tracking. This is another area where in chatbots have come a long way and very, very commonly used. Inventory management, again, continues to be a space wherein all these AI applications have helped. And last but not the least, customer feedback and surveys. As you know, all these brands and businesses, they always want to stay close to their customer, but have struggled to do that. They have seen that a chatty chatbot experience makes their customers speak more. So much so as 30% more response rate when they use chat as an experience instead of a simple form or a questionnaire. Moving on, the second area, which is personalization and visualization. Now, this area is which is visually more visible to all of us in the retail journey. Like, as I said, personalized product recommendations. This has a little bit of overlap with the chatbot because chat experience is used for this as well, apart from just doing it on the pages. Then visual search has become pretty popular. You would have seen all these different websites and even stores wherein you can go with an image and they have an application wherein they can use that image and search the right product for you. Virtual try-ons and AR have become very popular. And not just this, rather in the West, digital fashion is becoming pretty popular. People are using AR filters, posting pictures, going on Zoom calls without, and they are actually buying digital fashion now. This is how far it has reached. I was also looking at how um, Mark Zuckerberg is promoting the new AR glasses now, right? So this space is only here to grow further. Footwear industry is another area. Like footwear and retail are the two areas where AR has already found its space. And in fashion, jewelry, it is finding its space now. It ha there has been some applications in FMCG as well, but not very successful there. Then personalized marketing campaigns is another area where AI has helped a lot. There are multiple tools available which are being used by the industry to do targeted marketing campaigns. And they have seen as much as 50% better hit rate with such tools. Last but not the least, visualize, visual merchandising optimization is another area where in AI analyzes customer behavior and preferences to optimize oh. for layout. So, you know, when uh, many of you would have seen that when you go to the stores, like the kids uh, items are usually at their eye level, especially during the checkout. So these are all done on purpose basis, you know, the kind of audience you get and the store layouts are kept changing rather so much. So some of the big retailers have the cameras that they have in the stores. They're using it constantly. Those feeds are being used constantly to see how do the store layout optimizations match what they are seeing in the stores. The third area is oops, inventory management. Now this, uh, while I have it on number th three, but this was the first and foremost area actually where AI made a lot of progress and the area where at least most of the Indian companies started engaging, like all Reliance Retail, Tata Group, Big Bazaar, more, you name an Indian retail player and they are using AI for inventory management. So where all do they use it? They use it for demand forecasting, optimization of stock levels, automatic replenishment, real-time inventory tracking, and waste reduction. And brilliant case studies available all the dear market, which is very, very mature. Their products available in the industry, like Swift Reliance and Tata, have already set their footsteps in using AI for inventory management in the right way. And now all the players are merely following the footsteps. Chad is the second most mature space, and personalization and visualization is the space which is seeing a lot of attraction now. These are some metrics, as you heard in my introductions, a big, big believer of AI delivering value. If AI is not delivering value, then it's pointless. Rather, any technology is pointless. So uh, the brands and businesses using AI in retail, they have seen 35% uptick in branch loyalty by implementing chat assisted services. 
they have clearly, clearly seen an increase in brand stickiness, which of course helps with conversion as well. Then a clear 20% increase in conversion by implementing AI powered product recommendations. So by fine tuning the, and I'm not even including the targeted uh, AI campaigns. This is pure play AI related recommendations on the pages. And then in the inventory management, multiple examples, as I said, on high inventory turnover ratio, which really, really matters in the industry. For those who are new, inventory turnover ratio is how soon the inventory gets cleared in simple terms. And they have seen that uh, very, very high using AI. These are some of the other areas where AI has seen some specific uses. Trends based on demand, demand like Style Luma is one of the popular ones, WSGN, and there are many others who are popular here. But there are specific organizations that have done well, and people take subscriptions of it, not like a direct integration. Price optimization is another area where AI is being used. AI for designing is becoming pretty popular now with, you know, likes of Leonardo AI runway and few other uh, uh, AI enabled applications becoming popular. People are using these tools for designing. Fraud detection, always an area where AI has been used historical and historically and is being used today as well. Content creation is another space. You all would have seen AI generated images and videos. Data and analytics, again, one space where AI has always been very pop, uh, powerful. And then AI for sampling is also becoming pretty popular. It's like more 3D for sampling. But if you would go out and speak with businesses, they are, uh, you know, kind of uh, putting 3D and 3D applications in the AI bucket. But I would put it more as modern technology than AI. And then last but not the least, for a lot of in-house functions for big retailers. I will pause for a moment. Um, any questions, any comments from any, anyone on the chat before we progress? Uh, let me also, OK. Looks like none. So we will move on to showcasing some of the applications of AI. I will pass over to Chinmay and Arnav to show you some of the work that has been actually done in modern technology, 3D and jewelry space. And we have had huge savings. We'll also talk about the case study there. Over to Chinmay and Arnav. Okay. Hello, everyone. So Arnav just say, I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, is it visible? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So this is a product Celia, wherein like the basic use case for this is like jewelry brands create three files for rendering and 3D printing, right? So if they want images of these three files, they have to go through a long process and very heavy and expensive softwares to generate those images and video. So what we are doing is Hey, hey, you can upload a 3D file and then it is completely browser based. So you can access it even from a mobile phone or a weaker system. So what this enables is you can load a 3D model of any jewelry file and you can capture and record these images, which can then be showcased into your website. So for example, I'll just click this image first. And when I go to this, yeah. Similarly, you can also record videos. So for example, I want to record a 360 video, which is, which is very standard in the jewelry industry. So it records a 360 video of this particular ring. And you can like, pause it over here and then the video gets downloaded. So this particular process takes a lot of time, like roughly to create one video, it can take like hours sometimes. So here, here as you saw, like it, it is instant, like you click record and you can just download it. So this is our front end screen. Let me also show you a, what the backend looks like or where you can actually upload the files. 
So this is our admin portal which is where you can actually select a collection name and location and upload your file over here and see all the details related to that particular file. And let's say if I go to the product that I just showed you guys. Yeah. You can also see all the information related to that particular file. So for example, what the what the file size is, what it what, what the format is, who uploaded it, and uh, how many number of diamonds are there. We also have uh, like a more detailed and more customizable version of the front end screen. I'll show you that now. Yeah. So what this enables us is in the earlier version that I showed you, we have some predefined colors for metals. So gold looks like this, silver looks like this, and this is rose gold. But sometimes, let's say you want to have a look for 18 karat gold or 12 karat gold. So you cannot really customize it over here. But if I go over here and select this button, you can actually to tweak to any color which might meet your personal standards for like, let's say 12 karat gold. And similarly, you can also change the background for this. So this also enables us for having customizable images with different colors backgrounds. And the third one is for diamonds. Like if you want to have some gemstones or stuff, and this is all happening in real time. You can also upload different environments. So let's say I don't really like this look. If, if I don't really like this look, I can also change the environment, which actually affects how the reflections are done. So let's say if I choose this environment, you can see the reflections are a bit different and the, the look of the ring is drastically different. You can also upload any environment that you like to customize it further. Yeah, uh, any questions? One question, Ankit. So this, uh, this cilia is kind of an in-house tool that you have, or is it like a market product uh, that you are using? Uh, can you el elaborate on that? Then, no, uh, what so it means it, is it is it's our in-house, it's our in-house product. Yeah, it okay. is our in-house. Like, okay. I thought you were asking for use case. I think Celia can be used for integrating directly into customer's website where you, where you can actually okay. like play with it. Okay. Yeah. Clear. Thanks. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Thank you. You said uh, it also can create videos. Yeah, yeah it can create videos. And uh, we can define uh, product. Uh, it's not necessarily limited to say jewelry or any other product that we can think of. Yeah, I think uh, we also have like, we are doing some POC on remotes and watches. So that is also an up pipeline. I think like it, it is not definitely not limited to jewelry. Only. Thank you. Okay. No. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell me uh, what is there in, in the background, in the backend? So which model you use? How, in short, one or two line, how you do did it? Uh, uh, can you repeat that? Your voice is <clears throat> not clear. Okay. So can you tell us uh, what is there running in the background? Which model, AI model you use? Or whatever you want to reveal? Uh, this is like a... Oh, okay. Or it's it. a trade I think secret. Is, no, I mean it's not about that. I think okay. it's like an it's it's like an engine, like uh, the three D engines that we use for games and different stuff, right? So that those are like based on WebGL. Ah, okay. So this is based on WebGL. Okay, and apart from that, what what is uh, which technology used in the backend? Oh, I think. 
Yes, Agar, it's use... like it's a homegrown product that yeah. we sell to various businesses. So we cannot share the complete okay. tech stack for you. But yes, okay. this is our own uh, brute solution. We, as as Arnav shared, we use WebGL. We also use components of Blender. We use ReactJS and various different libraries. And combining it together, we have created this experience. And then this one, what you saw was for jewelry. We also use it for electronics and all the other players. So it's hard for us to share the complete pipeline. But these are the broad level technologies which have been used in the back end. Nice. Thank you, Jisha. You're welcome, Sagar. And so the major uh, you know, advantage of this is so I, like for jewelry, what we realized was that 3D models are already available. Uh, jewelry industry works on CAD files, which are used for production, you know, like the shanks that are created, and it works on top of it. So then we figured a way of reusing it and creating rendered images and videos. And it almost like so for one of the clients, they saw uh, creating this tech for 15 lakhs rupees. They already saw savings of 30 lakhs within one year. And then the same savings will continue every year, year over year, right? And so with only one time investment. So this is the power of using 3D. However, would not recommend to use it for small priced items where 3D is not used for sampling. Say, so for example, we have used 3D for sell before manufacture in fashion. There it's okay because then the brands don't need to manufacture anything. However, if you're already sampling uh, a fashion t-shirt like say which is 500 rupees their 3d might not be very effective pure play from return of investment purposes because creating a 3d model will have its own expense and then you can of course do things like these but it will be an added expense then kind of cutting down your bottom line so hence you know pure play 3d is good wherever 3d is already used for sampling or the article price is above five to 7,000 range. There you can do wonders with this technology. Let me check chat if there's any more questions. And not related to this 3D. So we will move on to the next one and we will come back to uh, computer vision uh, later after we've done the second one. So the second one is related to chat uh, we have Deva and Shiv here. And it's not just the chatbot. We'll also show you how AI is being used for uh, annotations and tagging and further uh, for chat experience on top of it. So over to you, Deva and Shiv. Okay, never mind. Um, in the meantime, um, let, me, I, let me present my screen and showcase that. So Deva just shared the stylus with you, which, you know, we have various different applications of. But behind the scenes, we have a robust um, engine. So what we do is, like, say, for example, assume the store is in Shopify. We have a one-click downloader, which can download your entire catalog with the existing tags. On top of it, we provide this annotation uh, screens wherein you can pick your particular, uh, say, if I want to an annotate, annotate some uppers and I want to annotate tops, then I can choose a particular uh, areas and then start annotating the entire catalog. And then not just this, what we have also done is, like, of course, in some areas, there might be tags available. But for others, we do have AI models built, like this one's a recorded sample of where you would see a skirt from a customer's catalog, sorry, a brand's catalog. And our model can identify what are the colors. And it can also identify the shades of the color. Then we have a logic written on top of it that the uh, highest probabilistic color detection is the color that we use. So this is only one of the multiple examples that we have on how AI can be used for annotation. But why do we have this whole manual component today is primarily because the brands have their brand vocabulary already, right? And it's very hard to change the brands completely. So rather than changing their brand vocabulary, what we do is we take their tags, 
we massage them with the ai tags and the patterns etc and then with our styling book of knowledge we give the chat kind of experience that you just saw and then of course uh, we have been uh, getting uh, traction from different retail industries like gupshop is already doing it for a uh, retail broadly but we went niche uh, using these technologies to give a unique experience in this particular space sorry shiv i stole your part any questions from anyone related to this continuing to the question related to computer vision sorry i lost a wee there in the chat response uh, you can also check out i know reliance retail is uh, using computer vision a lot to monitor traffic in their stores and doing the planograms they do not have a vision like amazon go right now but they are collecting a lot of data so next time you get into any of the reliance owned stores know that they are tracking every single moment of yours and they do plan to use it in a big way in future but they have started using computer vision big time so that was pretty much it from our side are there any questions for AI and retail, or in general, for any of us, please pop them in the chat or speak up. Else, we can call it a day. Just one question from my end. Slightly mm -hmm. uh, technology friend. So, what different personas do you need to make this uh, product at a successful level? Like when I say persona, like data engineers, data scientists, uh, UX designers. Like, like what is the TV uh tag that you rely on in this industry. Oh, so you mean uh so you mean uh, let, me, let me paraphrase so that I understand your question right. So what you mean is what kind of roles do we need in the team to build yeah, solutions? Yeah, in like general, yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure, sure. So I would say for any product in general, right? It's not specific. But an AI-enabled product, of course, you need multiple roles. One, you need a product and business manager, right? So sometimes, yeah. you know, the product management will come from a simply technology product manager. Sometimes it will be a pair. You definitely need business expertise in there, right? So that is yeah. sometimes a pair, a single person, sometimes a business SME. Then you definitely need a UX expert. Why not just the interface design? Like for us to get to... Uh, that this is the product that will solve the user problem. There were thousands right. of global interviews done. Then, you know, figuring out, asking the right question, right people, you know, so all of that process goes into play. Then you will engage industry experts. So clearly, clearly you need a user experience expert who just doesn't know the interaction design. I would say that's the easiest bit, but who's more, uh, you know, user research and behavioral expert as well. That second, okay. third, of course, you need a solid technology come DevOps um, expert okay. who can figure yeah. out the tech stack. Then you need AI and 3D talent bases your specific application now, right? Because AI right, is yeah. so vast. So like a 3D person will not help you with, say, for example, data science role. Right, and then yeah, you yeah. do not need data science for something like Celia, for example, unless you're good getting into insights. So now it's not like you can just get one AI talent. You have to be very specific. It's computer vision. You have to find that person. Last but yeah. not the least, you need some generalists also, you know, like who can, like say in our case, we did need a designer, a fashion designer itself for the fashion space. Right, so they yeah, are yeah. digital fashion designers. So this is pretty much the different areas where you need people to make a successful product. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And by the way, there is this approach that we follow. You could look up, uh, there's a company called Strategizer. There is a very solid innovation approach, experimentation-led innovation. So I think that approach along with the team is what is a recipe to discovering products that solve for users' problems. Okay, thank you. Any more questions from anyone else? 
data couch team back to you so before we conclude i kindly ask everyone to take a moment to complete the feedback form shared in the chat your feedback is invaluable in keeping a, in helping us enhance future sessions i would like to extend my sincere thanks to jisha and her team for delivering such an informative and engaging session today i trust you found the insights as valuable as i did for those who who missed any part of the session or wish to revisit the material for today's session a recording will be available on data couch youtube channel the link to the recording will be shared on our social media channels and our monthly monthly newsletter if you have any further questions or would like to explore additional resources please feel free to reach out to us at hello@datacouch to stay updated on our upcoming sessions and access more valuable content please subscribe to our social media channels and join our meetup groups the relevant links are available in the chat thank you for your participation today we look forward to welcoming you at our next event wishing you all a wonderful rest of the day and a great weekend ahead thank you jisha and your team thank you happy friday everyone bye bye